Hip-hop mogul Jay-Z has just been formally minted a billionaire, according to Forbes, joining the likes of Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Michael Bloomberg, Carlos Slim Helu, Mark Zuckerberg, and Kylie Jenner. Although becoming a billionaire is an incredible achievement, Jay-Z is also part of an even smaller community of black billionaires, an even more prestigious community of American black billionaires, and is the first hip-hop artist to join these incredible ranks. In short, he's running this town right now. Jay-Z, whose real name is Sean Carter, grew up in a hard-knock life in Brooklyn's Marcy Housing Projects. He worked famously as a drug dealer before becoming an artist. He set up his own label, Rockefeller Records, to release his 1996 album, Fair Doubt. It was the first step in the increasing array of dead presidents that Forbes now conservatively estimates $1 billion. Jay-Z, 12 years old, shot his drug addict brother in the shoulder. At 49, he was the first rapper to be worth $1 billion. No one could have predicted that a kid from the projects whose father had abandoned him would have had such an influence. He is a self-made billionaire in the truest sense of the word, and his story is an inspiration to millions of fans all over the world. They're looking at him and they're wondering if he can do it, then I can. His wisdom is scattered through his 13 studio albums. Speaking of Jay-Z as an artist is an insult to the creativity of his business mind. There's a long list of living singers who have sold more albums than him, including Rihanna, Justin Bieber, and Ed Sheeran. Yet there were only two other musician billionaires in the world and both were over 70. Jay-Z is where he is because of dedication and smart decision making. Jay is teaching in a much bigger classroom than I'll ever teach in. They're going to learn from somebody. For a young person growing up, he's the guy to learn from. Warren Buffett Backed himself to go from good to great. Let's put an end to the misconception that Jay-Z was a prodigious artist, always destined to achieve greatness. He didn't release his first album until he was 26 years old and worked for years without a record contract. In background, Tupac and the infamous B.I.G. had an entire movie career and died without reaching this era. Of course, he was brilliant, but he didn't become a billionaire because of his inherent abilities. He spent years heating up audiences for larger acts and honing his technique. The distinction between Jay-Z and the other ambitious artists is that he persisted even though those around him were more popular. All I got is dreams. Nobody else believes, nobody else can see, nobody else but me, Jay-Z. His first two albums were pretty decent, but he finally got the number one spot on his third album. Since then, every album has topped the charts. His trophy cabinet consists of 22 Grammys. He is now undeniably one of the best of all time. How much do we see decent people giving up if they're not going to the top right away? The obsession with high-speed growth will leave us demotivated when things don't go our way. Few people are able to play a long game, change the lanes, and try for a new way. Everything you need to do is outlast others and believe in your abilities. Your company doesn't have to be launched as the best in the world, it can evolve to become that. Jeff Bezos started Amazon in 1994 and it made losses until 2003. People will tell you now how it was obvious to invest in Amazon early, but that's just hindsight bias. Many other entrepreneurs would have given up in Jeff's shoes, yet he's now the richest man in the world, and they aren't. Taken ownership of his craft The main difference between Jay-Z and most of the other successive creators is plain. He owns everything he's ever created. Others trade possible major gains for smaller wins when they begin. This short-term approach can mean that their bills will be paid, but if their art succeeds, they will only get 10 to 20 percent. Jay-Z bets on himself and wins the jackpot. When Jay-Z was first signed, he paid to break the deal and set up his own business instead. It could have been seen as a naive, childish act at the time for someone who had never released an album, but this decision has put him on the journey to where he is. Rockefeller Records was set up in a very small office, but sold half the business for $1.5 million when Def Jam, a larger record label, called. He held imaginative power and was regarded as a partner instead of a subordinate. A few years later, he became CEO of Def Jam and, as part of his contract, he was granted custody of his master records. This ensures that any royalties from his music fall directly to him. These alone are now worth $75 million. 
Jay-Z realized that ownership is what makes it necessary to become rich. All of us are focused on gaining more money, which is why we need to keep working. If you own the rights to your previous job, it can work for you instead. Are you working hard to build intellectual property right now to make someone else rich? Imagine that it was your money instead. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. Jay-Z Studies have shown that 80% of the value of a business is invested in its intellectual property. Tech giants are going to spend millions on small businesses to get their hands on it. Apple and Samsung invested more money than other companies would ever do to take legal action against each other. What you have to note is that if anyone is willing to pay you for your ideas, they have to believe it's worth more than that. They're depending on you being unable to make as much of the idea as they can. If you can close this loop, you can reap the benefits. Adopted an Empire State of Mind Brands have always been a major part of rap culture and some of you can recall My Adidas by Run DMC or Air Force Ones by Nelly. Rappers name dropped on the labels that they wanted to sound cool rather than make money. This vulnerability was soon realized by Jay-Z and Rockefeller Records. Why would they help anyone to get rich for free? It's rumored that several artists have been paying to advertise goods, but that wasn't enough either. Much like ideas, if a corporation is willing to pay you to advertise their brand, they will assume that the promotion would increase their sales. Jay-Z founded and purchased a business of his own instead. Now, when he used his scope to name a company, he'd get the incentives himself. He owns now premium alcohol brands Armand de Brignac and Deuce, $410 million. Clothing brand Rockaware sold for $204 million in 2007. Music streaming platform Tidal worth around $100 million. Live event promotion through Rock Nation worth $75 million. Sports agency Rock Nation Sports, chain of sports bars called the 4040 Club. The master stroke is choosing industries that are already strongly associated with its image. People who enjoy listening to Jay-Z are also likely to buy into the lifestyle that he promotes. Many of the world's biggest corporations have used this kind of philosophy from Google to Disney. They dominated their industry and then sought alternative industries using their same audience. Once a mountain climber climbs a mountain, he doesn't stop climbing. He finds another mountain. Jay-Z If you feel that you have climbed as far as you can in your business, focus on respecting your customers. What else should your brand trust? Do the research to find out what they want to do, then create something to satisfy it. Your credibility means that you can conquer many of the hurdles that face a brand new company. Don't waste it. Conclusion Jay-Z's path to becoming a billionaire was all about his thoughts. He worked hard even though the people around him were seeing him when he wasn't. Unlike everybody else, he bet on himself and took control of his life. Not yet fulfilled, he has carved out prospects in a variety of complementary industries. It took more time than most people were able to do, so he kept adapting. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like and share button. And for more videos, subscribe to our channel.